interesting part about humility, though, it's you can't teach that. It comes from within, right? I love what you said. You know, that's why I connected with you so well. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Vanessa, for the opportunity to uh, talk to you today. And, you know, I know the pandemic had a big impact on a lot of businesses and airline businesses lost about billions of dollars in, in the last uh, 10 months. And there are 15,000 restaurants uh, got shut down permanently because of one pandemic. Yes. So, you know, how had the uh, pandemic affected your business? So a little background on Seven Mile House. Um, Seven Mile House has been in existence for 163 years now. And I've been the owner for 16 years now. And um, we started off, well, in the 1800s as a stagecoach stop. And it's seven miles from San Francisco, which is why it's called Seven Mile House. But um, back in the day when we didn't have any cars, you would ride a horse or a carriage to go from place to place and you would have to rest. And so a mile house was sort of like a resting stop, not just for people, but also for horses because they needed their water and people needed to go to a restaurant or a bar because it was so difficult to travel. So that's our little story. Right. And, and we've been here for 163 years this week. So that's good. Well, that's amazing. Yeah. 163. And it has never been closed. Never. Except, except. Correct. Except, last year. Except last year. Wow. Yes, yes. So we had to close temporarily. When the pandemic hit, um, before the pandemic hit, we grew every year for mm. 16 years. Every year we grew. And then the pandemic hit and we had to close. Um, shelter in place um, was imposed. And I, instead of just doing takeout because it would have been too expensive for us to keep open, I decided to close. Mm -hmm. At first, everybody thought it was only going to be two to three weeks, right? Right, right. But it extended and extended. And um, after one and a half months, I decided to open up takeout. Yeah. Um, it was a nice reset, though, because at least I was able to, you know, bring down a lot of expenses and get my staff psych psychologically ready mm -hmm. that this is not normal. And so we had a lot of adjustments, less staff, less you know, less water, less electricity and everything. So we just had to make our adjustments. And then um, it was good timing, though. Yeah. Um, you need to make smart decisions during COVID. It was good timing. They opened up outdoor dining a few, maybe a month after, I think, or a month and a half. And yeah. so that went well for us. And then we started building, you know, um, uh, areas so that people could safely dine outside. So... It's been really hard for us. Um, I think overall we've lost, I want to say, 40 to 70 percent of our business, um, wow. depending on what time of last year we're talking about. If it was takeout, we probably lost, I'd say, like 70 percent of our business if we were only doing takeout. Right. And not to mention the staff that lost their jobs. You know, so it's it's just been really difficult um, when we reopened this year just for takeout. I only did it for my employees. Um, if I was a business owner who didn't really care about their employees, I would just remain closed mm -hmm. until outdoor dining would open because it was just not practical. But I had a commitment to my staff and I told them we will open on January 20, no matter what, because a lot of them were waiting. Right. You know, and they're like, okay, we're waiting to work. We're waiting to work. They were sacrificing. They didn't want to work somewhere else because they were comfortable here. They knew they were safe here mm. because in other work environments, they don't know what kind of safety measures they would be subject to. Yeah. So they just chose to wait until we were open. So I'm really lucky that my people decided to just wait. Okay. So, so yeah. You know, you know uh, there's always one question that I always want to ask other entrepreneurs. I mean, yeah. obviously you yeah. are an entrepreneur for 16 years, uh, ran a very successful restaurant business. Uh, you know, succeeding is easy, but failing and rebounding back is hard for most people. Yeah. So the question I want to kind of ask you is, what, what did you learn from this pandemic as a business owner, as a restaurant owner? What is, what is your one or two takeaways from this pandemic? I think it's um, be proactive and think ahead. 
you have to really listen to your environment. Um, you have to know what's going on in the news. You want to. You have to know what the government is doing in yeah. terms of what they're going to do for small businesses. You can't just wait yeah. for business to come because it won't, especially in these times, right? I mean, you know, you have a business and or businesses, and you can't just sit back. I mean, I've seen other people with businesses, and they're just like, okay, well. They're just waiting for the business. You you can't. You have to stay out there. You have to stay relevant. You actually have to do a lot of marketing. While we were closed, mm -hmm. I was actually really busy <laughs> doing a lot of social media, a lot of writing, a lot of just get trying to make sure that I'm still in touch with my customers even when we're closed. For one and a half months, I was incredibly busy just reaching out to people. Why? Because I built this business for 16 years. I don't want to be irrelevant. I want to be still top of mind no matter what. Because once we open, yeah. I want people to say, yes, we'll go there. That's the first place we're going to go to. And I think staying relevant, mm -hmm. even when you're closed, um, being in touch with your customers, just telling them the truth, you yeah. know, posting how you feel about what's going on. Tell them about your staff, right? And um, yeah, so it's just really communications, being proactive about your business, knowing what's going on in the environment, and also planning ahead um, is, is really key. And, and just loving what you do and being sincere with everything you do is, is what I think. Yeah, I think, I think uh, you, you made one very important point. See, when, when, uh, when people are failing, when they are losing, they like to kind of keep it very private and just like try to process the whole thing by themselves. Now that's important. But I love one thing that you just mentioned is to let the public know and, and, and let people know yes. uh, with authenticity yes. and transparency yes. what you as a restaurant go through. Because if you didn't do that, you know, probably Henny wouldn't know there's a restaurant called right. Seven Miles. Yes. And I wouldn't be meeting you today. Yes, that's uh, right. My that's point right. is that there's always going to be there are a lot of good people in this world. Yeah. When you call for help, yes. Uh, maybe out of a hundred, you know, people just listening to it. Mm -hmm. Maybe you do it a thousand times, mm -hmm. and if you have one good person that have that connection with you, there you go. You're gonna get the help you need. But I think a lot of people sometimes they don't want to ask for help. Right. And because they feel kind of like embarrassed yes. or, uh, you know, just doesn't want, you know, to be sympathized in a way. Right. Right. right but right. I think as long as, like you said, as long as you're authentic, you have value to your customers, your heart is pure, nothing wrong. We're right. letting people know what you're going through. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And then eventually the right mm -hmm. people, those few people will have a connection with you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they don't want to help you. And you know what's interesting is that's what people want. Yeah. They want a connection. They don't just want a restaurant to go to. Sure. They want to see what those human beings are doing behind all that. What's your story? You know? Yeah. With the emergence of social media, I think you know, exactly what you're doing too is reaching out to people, yeah. is is telling the story. You know, stories are so much more important now mm -hmm. because stories are more available now. And that's why communications is so important, yeah. right? Because yeah. that's what people are hungry for. They connect with people who, who, who want to tell you what's going on with them, whether it be good or bad. And, and I noticed that there's always a, a spike in, mm -hmm. um, in readership when I post something that's long. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or something that's really just touches the heart or anything from the heart. That's yeah. really when it when it spikes. And that's because you're really just pouring your heart out. And, right. you know, n not necessarily a bad thing, but a good thing, too. And everyone wants to celebrate with you when it's a good thing. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's, it's just really, really important. Okay. Let's ask you another fun question. Uh, yeah. Uh, what, make your, what make Seven Miles different than other restaurants? Um... I think number one is our staff um, and the feeling that you get when you're here. And you got 40 something people working for, uh, for you, right? Before COVID. Co okay, 40 yes. something. But now right. I have like 20, 20 22, 22 right. yeah. Um, um, a lot of them, you know, found other jobs. I helped them find other jobs okay. um, because, nice. you know, we, we can't have them full time anymore. So yeah. I kind of reached out right. to our customers and said, I have a lot of amazing people who need work. Uh -huh. And can can anybody find good jobs for these folks? Because yeah. I can guarantee these guys are good. Right. But your question was, what does 
what it, what's different about Seven Mile House. I think it's the, it's the feeling, the overall experience mm -hmm. that you get from here. Yes, we're a sports bar, a live music venue. Yeah. We have great food. We have, you know, amazing drinks. But it's the overall experience when you come here. You'll hear the chatter when you're sitting by somebody's table and you know they're a local. Right. And you're like, hey, you know, how's your mom? You know, like our staff. Yeah. communicates with our customers that way where it's just it just really feels like family and I know it's just cliche when you said oh it feels like family but but it's important though it's important but it's our the hashtag culture. yeah Everything, exactly the hardest thing to build a great company a great business is what building the right environment and culture correct and I think you know, people come is not because of the food only yes, and yes. it's got to be good yes but then when they walk in the environment yes you know your staff yes and uh, do they feel that they belong to a community? So right. if I'm coming to this restaurant, if it's yeah. just a restaurant, right. I think I might just come one time. Yeah. But if I yeah. come here, good. Okay. Yeah. You know? And because it's a family, it's a community, yeah. I feel very warm. Yes. I'll come, at, I'll come back every single week. You know and, what I mean? It, and I think that one of the good things about COVID that happened to us yeah. is that I personally realized that the 16 year investment in yeah. what I have done to create that family environment, I didn't even plan to, yeah. it was just came natural. But when the pandemic hit, it just felt like all that time, you just saw all the, um, the payoff mm -hmm. because you started seeing your connections to the community yeah. and you feel so overwhelmed with love because they really just, um, uh, give back the love that you've given to them. And I just realized, oh my God, we have touched people this way. Mm -hmm. It was just so wonderful. So when we needed help, people came and it was just great, you know? Well, I'm glad to hear that because I think when when everything's going well, you really don't know who are your most loyal customers, yeah. who are the yeah. most loyal yeah. staffs, yeah. who are the most loyal mentors or friends, right? Mm -hmm. But when you go through a crisis like a COVID-19, yeah. it kind of filter out. It put you in a great perspective yeah. and find out, wow, these are the best employees I have. They're not only with me when everything's going well, they're still with me when mm -hmm. things are going mm -hmm. bad. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and your family members, and, and of course, you know, when I talk about that, you also have two sides, you know, two sides of a coin, right? Right. There are people that you think they're your best friend, the best staff, and when the crisis hit, they're gone. Right. But it's okay. That's life. We sign up for this thing called life. You right. know what I mean? Exactly. And 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 and, uh, and I'm glad that uh, you know through this COVID nineteen, from your experience, yes. you found out there's a lot of good people around. You want to give it back to you. That's because you probably gave a lot before the COVID nineteen for many years, and now naturally it kind of come back to you. Right. In a, in, right. in a very unexpected way. Yeah. Very unexpected. Yeah. unexpected. So 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 I've been an entrepreneur for many many years. Yes. And uh, I guess before we end up this uh, little talk with you today, before I have some surprise for you, do you have any question for me? Uh, from an entrepreneur to another entrepreneur, is there anything that you want to ask me or uh, anything I can help you? Any advice I can help you? I will I would love to do that. During COVID nineteen, it's really important for businesses to know how not just to survive but also to thrive yeah. in this kind of environment what yeah. is your advice so so the key word you just mentioned is thrive and i like it surviving is a totally different strategy than yeah. thriving look you know i don't want to sound um uh unempathetic to people's business model mm -hmm. uh, or the way people run their business or their family and here's the reality of the thing is if there is a COVID-19, there will be another pandemic because we have the MERS, we have the SARS, we have the Ebola, uh, now COVID. Um, if one pandemic happens and it's unexpected for you because you never experienced it and it kind of slowed down your business, it's nobody's fault because you don't know about it, I don't know about it. But if there's not a similar pandemic happen in the next two, three, five, ten 10 years, and if you're not prepared and anticipate it, it's nobody else's fault. Would you agree? Yes. So to, to thrive in business is to, you have to be able to anticipate. Now, obviously the business you're running is different than mine. I'll give you an example. I am in the financial life insurance business. Mm -hmm. And listen to my story real quick. Uh, before the pandemic, Vanessa, 
all of my sales guy. They literally have to go see a client face to face to talk about life insurance policies. Correct. Because it's regulated. You can't sell a life insurance policy through Zoom, through phone. No, you can't. I have to see you. Oh. All right. Now, when the pandemic start, uh, it, it happened. Yeah. You know, our company and my partner had to reach out to the CEO of the financial and the insurance company that we're selling policies for, and say, yes. "Look, if we don't change the model of how we are able to present a product, we you're gonna lose a lot of money. We're gonna lose lose a lot of money, and we're gonna be shut down completely. Are you open minded?" to work out a new plan, a new strategy where our sales guy can promote your product with compliance through Zoom. Yes. And guess what? That deal happened. Guess what? Our business not only survived in 2020, we thrived, we grew 25%. Right. So what is the moral of the, of the story? The moral of the story is that you have to look at your business model of, over here. I want you to imagine today Tomorrow, there's not a pandemic. Let's say it's all open. Everything's back to normal. Music. What are you gonna do differently today with your business model that will keep your business going? Now, that is a tough question. The answer could be, you know what? Uh, I am going to, you know, do a lot more carry out, like DoorDash and Uber Eat. They blew up, right? You know, maybe I'm gonna. If if another pandemic happens, I have a strategy where I can switch my restaurant from dine in. To 90% carry out, and I want to have a exit strategy, a plan B. That could be an answer. Now, another answer to yourself could be, "Wow, the business model I am in right now is not easy. If another pandemic hits, maybe I need to change another business." Mm-hmm. You see, I don't want to sound unempathetic because I'm not. Because the way I advise people is practicality, right? Yes. Because Because if you keep running a, a a restaurant business, and if you don't have Plan B, let's say you th- you you think about everything, you don't have a Plan B. What does that mean? If you don't have a Plan B with your exit with your existing business model, you may have to switch a direction of another business that allow you to make money virtually. Yes. See, my honest advice to people is. If you are relying, depending on a business model where you have to see people face to face all the time,、mm-hmm. it becomes very difficult if another crisis hit.、Mm-hmm. So my best advice for a business model like a restaurant business, I say, have a strong plan B on carry out. Have a menu that it starts you kind of like from maybe before it's ninety percent dining in, only ten percent carry out.、Great. Maybe design a menu. Mm-hmm. That attract people to order through your restaurant right now, and maybe go forty, sixty, sixty dying in, forty percent carry out. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. If you can work on that plan, when it another pandemic hits, you have a plan B. You're not worrying anymore because you anticipate it. Yeah. So basically, be open-minded, be resilient, and be resourceful, and, and be proactive. And 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 have the ability to make changes as things around us change. You know, one of the biggest mistake for a lot of entrepreneurs that I mentor over the years,、yeah. I work with over the years. You know what that is? Their ego is getting in the way. You know、yeah. what ego is like? I've done this for ten years. I've done、yeah. this. This is the only way.、Mm-hmm. You know what? I love my way,、mm-hmm. but your way ain't making no more money. You're losing profit. Yeah. Don't ever let ego get into the way where you are no longer wanting to change. Yeah. So if you're open minded to change. You know, I love what Bruce Lee said. One of his most favorite quote is "Flow like water." Right, I agree. Like water. Yeah. Right. So that's my advice、uh, for you as a restaurant business owner. You think humility comes into play in、um, in something like this? To me, humility is is the、uh, the fundamental of longevity of success. Okay. Oh, we got some coffee. We have coffee.、Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, Vanessa. Let me tell you something. Humility is the foundation of longevity of success. You know how many people that I work with, when they have success, when they elevate, they start to become arrogant. Right. They start to become, you know what? I'm better than other people. They start to become a me mentality、mm-hmm. versus. A team mentality. Right, right.、Um, 
I think I think humility is what keep the top one percent successful entrepreneur at the top mm -hmm. is that they always always remembering where they're coming from. Before I came to your restaurant today. Believe it or not, I just sent a message to my entire sales force, and there's a lot of people in my in, in my company. And I told all my guys this morning, literally before I came, there you know there is no self-made millionaire. There is only team-made millionaire. Mm -hmm. The reason why someone is successful is because people around you. I would not be able to do what I do unless I have good leaders, good managers, right. good salespeople, good camera crews. Surround yourself. Uh, surround yourself with the right people. So right. I think humility is uh, is extremely, extremely important if you want to be successful long time. Yes. All right. If you're looking for attaining success short time, mm -hmm. then humility it, it, it doesn't it doesn't matter that much. But if you want to looking for sustaining success, humility is everything. The interesting part about humility, though, it's you can't teach that. It comes from within, right? I love what you said. You know, that's why I connected with you so well. <laughs> and uh, I talk to a lot of my guys in my sales company, believe it or not. They say, how come you're so humble? How come certain people are not humble? I really, here's what I tell, tell my people. I think it's in your DNA. Yeah. You can teach humility. You just can't. Mm -hmm. It's either you got it or you don't got it. Yep. And if you don't got it, mm -hmm. You better surround yourself with a lot of your humble people, because yeah. those are humble people can infect you to become humble. Yeah, <laughs> if that make any sense. Yeah, hopefully yeah. they would infect you. But, yeah. but you're right, because you can't you can't teach humility. you can't teach humility. That's from that's from childhood. Right. You know. Right. So. It, it's just like the, this is the first time I met you, and I already know you're a very humble person. If you're not a humble person, your people would not want to stay with you through COVID nineteen. They already left already. Yeah. Based on your story, I know I know that is within you. Your mom, your dad taught you a lot of great value. Mm. So today I have a little surprise for you before I leave. Okay, okay. here's a surprise. Okay, <laughs> I got a little check for you. I don't, I'm not going to tell you the amount. Yeah. And this is from my foundation, Just Wish Foundation, uh, to the Seven Mile House. And I hope this little uh, little something something can uh, can help you big time. Yeah. All right. So Vanessa, thank you so much. This is for you and your thank you. and, and, thank you so and, and much, your partner Jack. here. Okay? I appreciate you and, so much, and Jack. Thank you for the opportunity for having the last 30, 40 minutes to talk with you. And I can't wait to see Seven Miles House prosper again. Thank you so much. <laughs>